Hey guys, welcome back to the series, in the last one, I've showed you guys how to make and set up the trains in the game. Now, we're almost done creating our first rail fanning game, all we need is the crossings, which this part is going to be all about. Anyways, let's get started. After we tested our trains, we can now start adding crossings to our game. Now in order to do that, check the crossing on Google Maps to make sure you have the right equipment. Before I continue on, I'm going to give you a disclaimer about the crossings in the toolbox. Some of the crossings shown, according to my screen, are very outdated. There are also ones that are leaked, but I can't find them for now, but you'll come upon one in your toolbox. Also, I've talked to one of the people who has stuff leaked, named Hunter Duncan 362 He says, in quote, not really my old stuff anymore. My newer things that I highly detail, I'm gonna keep private. Some other people, unlike Hunt, can likely punish you if you are using their leaked models without permission. I do find a pack that I recommend using. It's called Crossing System V1 by RTCI. It's an easy, simple system that you can configure and manage to use. The link for that is in the description. After you get it, put it into the game, but for me, I'll be using ones that were given to me by my friend, and no, you can't ask him for these. Now that you've added railroad crossings to your game, let's make them work. In order to do this, I'll use sensors to activate crossings. How does that work for one track? Well, here's a detailed explanation of what I'm going to do in this part. First, we'll put two sensors in each direction that covers at least a quarter of a mile from the road. Then, once the train comes, let's say it's going southeast, it'll activate the crossing via the sensor. Even though it touches the other one and has already passed the crossing, it won't continue to activate it. When the train passes the crossing, it turns off after 5 to 10 seconds, depending on the circuit that the relay case has. So now, after we find the crossing that we're going to use, we're going to start placing them where they are in relation to real life. Here's another tip, for extra realism, place ballast rocks on the base of the crossings instead of seeing grass all the time. Then group the crossings together or put them under a folder. For me, the folder option is way more convenient. Now, let's test it to make sure it works. We have a working crossing now. All we need to do is program the sensors that I talked about earlier. Let's start building the sensors. We first need to create a part. Change the color. And name it sensor. Then, stretch it to around 800 studs. It can be larger depending on the speeds that your trains are going at. Make sure it's anchored and can collide must be false. Then move them into the control box of the crossing.
Now here comes another part of sensors, which is scripting. So, create a new script, and I'll start making and explaining it one by one. In the script, we'll get the part with a specific name to turn on off the crossing. We'll start off by creating a local function with the sensor itself. Then we need to get the name of the part that it needs to know. I'll put glider A. The letter part after glider indicates one direction that it's going. So, we got to rename all the gliders to the name in the script that we put. We are also going to put a local function for the state of the part touching the sensor, setting it to false as the default. Continuing on, let's create two functions for when the part touches and leaves the area. We'll start off by creating the first one. We'll target the other part in parenthesis. Then we're going to create an if statement, where if the part has the exact name shown in the script. We set the touched variable to true. Pasting the same function again, this time changing the name and the variable state to false. For the first one only, we're going to set the trigger value to true since the part is first contacting with the sensor. Here comes a crucial part to this. We are now going to make a script that'll turn the trigger value to false in a decent number of seconds. If you set the trigger value to false on the other function, it'll turn off and on repeatedly, making the crossing have a stroke. To do this, create a script. You can name it whatever you prefer. Then create a wait function. I'll put it at around 12 seconds, then I'll put the false trigger value here. Make sure the script is disabled. In the sensor script, we'll type the script being disabled in the first one. Then we'll do the opposite on the other. That way, the script will do a countdown until the crossing deactivates. Now, in order for the whole script to work, we have to connect the functions to the sensor itself. For the on part touch function, make sure the sensor stated is when it's touched. While for the on part leave function, its state needs to be when the touching state has ended. The whole script is now complete. I'll also have a link to it in the description. Now, paste the script into the other sensor, but this time change the part name to glider before the trains that are going to the opposite. A recommendation that I'd prefer is to create another sensor for the same direction. Put them at a decent distance from each other. Sometimes, the script won't 100% fully work, so if that happens, do this step. With the process complete, it's now time to test it to make sure it works. And let's watch to see the train touching the sensors. It looks like it works. Now let's see if it can go all the way.
Since it now works, let's set the sensor's transparency to on. Then publish the game for the final results. Congratulations! You've made an automatic crossing. Which now finally means that you're almost done with the game. This concludes the fourth part of the series. We've pretty much almost completed our rail fanning game, but we have a few more steps on the way. On part 5, we'll be looking at some tips and tricks to make your game look better. This video took longer than expected, but it'll be worth the wait. Roblox content will be resuming soon. So subscribe to the channel in case you want to know when our Roblox and real life rail fanning content comes around. Anyway, I'll see you guys on the last one. Have a good day.